Welcome back to the Core Cars News Tech Lab. Today we're going to be taking a look at everything new with YouTube TV in 2024. It's only a few weeks into, or a couple months almost, fully into 2024. And there's so many new features and changes to YouTube TV. I wanted to do a quick breakdown of everything new with the service. First though, before we get into that, if you're new here, do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. It really does help us and hopefully we can help you save money, but still watch the shows you enjoy. So with that said, let's dive into everything happening with YouTube TV. There's really several major improvements. Number one is this load, starting off with the improved picture quality. So YouTube TV has um, been rolling out on 4K capable devices, a new 1080p enhanced mode. This new, um, and here's another one, new, we'll talk about this in a minute, but ability to change channels. But you now have the ability to have higher quality upscaled 1080p streaming. Now, many channels actually only stream in 720p, and YouTube TV has been slowly rolling out on 4K supported devices, which include like my 4K Roku TV you see behind me, the ability to have an enhanced 1080p. Now, YouTube has a current glitch where it doesn't necessarily always correctly mark that it's being streamed in 1080p upscale, but it will be if you look at the stats, it is happening. Now with that, you don't have to do anything. YouTube TV will automatically adjust to 1080p enhanced bitrate. This new bitrate includes higher um, ability to have more images per second, allowing you to have smoother um, things like footballs flying across the screen, hockey pucks flying across the ice, fight scenes and action movies will all look smoother and better. Again though, that feature is automatic. You don't have to do anything. It automatically happens for your device. So really cool feature there with that. But let's dive into this real quick here. Um, and let's take a look. It looks like we got a basketball game going. Here we go. Let's jump into this. I want to show you something really cool. I just want to stand in front of the TV so I don't get a copyright complaint. Oh, all right. If you press down and you go into your settings here, so you can press down on a live stream, you can reduce the broadcast delay, meaning you have faster ones here. So press down go into your settings here and go over to menus. Now this reduced broadcast delay allows you again to, instead of maybe having 45 seconds to a minute delay behind cable TV, you now have um, just maybe 20 to 30 seconds. So you select right here, broadcast delay. You see, I have it set to default right now. Default will reduce the amount of buffering you may experience here with this, but you will now, um, or you will be farther behind cable television. If you select decreased, you see here, now I just jumped ahead in time. I find in my testing, it's about 15 to 20 seconds with this, where you jump ahead in your um, speed. So sorry, I gotta stand in front of it because YouTube is very aggressive on copyright claims. Broadcast delay is a really cool feature. They launched it last year. What's permanent and changed this year about broadcast delay is the ability to now have it actually um, be permanent. So once you turn on reduce broadcast delay, it will permanently keep that on until you turn it off. You can switch back. Now you do run the risk of buffering, even though it'll be faster. Because of that, if your internet has a hiccup or they have a hiccup or something where there's a hiccup, you run the risk of your screen freezing that little spinning wheel happening for a second. I was able to watch the Super Bowl using this and only one time did we see buffering happen. The rest of the time it worked as smoothly as expected with it. So we got enhanced picture quality automatically applied. The optional reduced buffering. Now one note with that reduced buffering, it's by device. So you, if I turned it on this TV and I had a second TV in my home, I would have to turn it on. That's only available for smart TVs and streaming players, phones, and at least at the time of this recording, I don't believe phones, but death, and watching it through the browser does not support reduced broadcast delay. But Roku's Fire TVs, Apple TVs, smart televisions, and others do support that feature. The other great big feature that they've rolled out is improved multi-view. Now, we have for some time now had multi-view on here, um, and this allows you to watch up to four events at once um, without needing to switch between channels. You can, oh, here we go. You can now select from pre-made ones, like here, I'm in the middle of the day, so there's no sporting events, but I got all the sports channels, all the news channels, the weather channels, and other um, multi-view is happening. Now with this though, they have something called build a multi-view now available. If you go to a sporting event that's happening live 
and you click on it and it's part of a multi-view, instead of just maybe giving you two or three options to pick from in the multi-view, they have something they call build a multi-view. And this allows you to pick from a list of games where you can pick four different games. You say, I wanna see this game, this game, and this game. And it will give you the stream that's happening now with those um, four games in it. Originally when it launched, this was limited to NBA games. Now it's available for a wide range of games, including college basketball, NBA, and others. Whatever games are in the list. Now the downside here is you cannot pick any random channel. I can't say I want ABC, the Disney Channel, CNN, and ESPN in a mixture. It's limited to sporting events, and you do it that way. So really cool new feature. And lastly, one of the most popular, most requested feature is the ability to do a um, jump back to the last channel. Now, have you ever been jumping back and forth between two different uh, events? Recently during the Super Bowl, there was a playoff happening, and my dad and I wanted to watch the end of the WM. It went to, uh, on PGA, went to a playoff at the last minute, just as the Super Bowl was happening. We were jumping back and forth. Now, you could always press down twice and get to a roll of games down here, but YouTube made it even better. On all streaming players now, if you hold the select OK or whatever you may call it, the button that you select an icon with here, if you hold it down while you're streaming, it will jump to the last channel. Now it's important to note here with that, you have to do two things. First of all, you have, in that current time since I launched this app, you have to have watched two channels. It does not remember what the other channel you watched the last time you had the app open was. So you can do that. So if I start watching ESPN and I jump to FS1, I can now just by holding the OK button down for a second, automatically switch back and forth. The other catch here with this is it doesn't give you the option to resume from where you last, last left off. You still need to go through the menu to find that. It will always jump to the most recent live moment. And I think for most people watching sports, that's a great option. Now people say, well, you have multi-view. Why do you need that feature if you're watching sports? Well, sometimes you want full screen, right? Hey, I'm watching the Super Bowl, but every commercial break, I wanna jump over to see what's happening in the Waste Management PGA Tournament. Just hold the button and I switch. I don't want multi-view, I want full screen. It's really cool. Works on all channels. It doesn't matter if they're sports channels, news channels, entertainment channels. You just have to have two channels open at the time you did this. Again, launch the app, start one channel, go watch another channel. And then once you do that, holding the OK button on Roku, the select button and others, holding it down on Apple TV, Fire TV, Google TV, Roku TVs and others, will jump you back and forth between the last two ones. Where well, there you go, improved picture quality, improved multi-view DVR, giving you the option to help build a multi-view. The ability to reduce the broadcast delay, so if you're, you know, you're a big sports fan, you don't wanna be far behind it, that will get you closer to live as possible. And the ability to jump back and forth between the last channels you watched. All kinds of great improvements come to YouTube TV, and they say more are coming soon. Well, there you go. Did I miss anything new? Leave me a comment, let me know. If you're new here, do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. So YouTube recommends our videos to more people, and hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost of television and still watch what you enjoy. Until next time, take care, be safe. I'll be back again real soon.